Uh, hello, everyone. It's David and Lisa from our home. Uh, formal introduction. I'm David Dorfman. I am a choreographer, uh, educator, teacher, um, and uh, I've been directing uh, my vainly named dance company, David Dorfman Dance, for 35 years now. And we are uh, incredibly pleased to be about to present A Way Out of My Body at Skirball Center, NYU. And this is... Uh, I'm Lisa Race, and uh, I choreograph, I dance with David Dorfman, um, which I've been doing for a very long time. And um, I teach at Connecticut College. We're here in New London, Connecticut, um, enjoying a spring day. And um, happy to be here. Yay. Um, you know, one of the things that we thought we would talk about is the notion of time, the notion of depth of relationship, the notion of uh, pain and joy, life and death, all the things that have gone into a way out of my body, gone into our relationship, our collaborative relationship. We collaborate on everything. We share an office at Connecticut College where we teach. Uh, we share our, um, just behind us is our kitchen um, that has one little desk that um, our computers are about three inches from each other. And there's a certain need, perhaps, and love of closeness and intimacy that I've always felt uh, familiarly. And I think Lisa has too. It's one thing that drew me to Lisa immediately. I'll say more about our moms in a, in a few moments. Um, that is a source material for a way out of my body, among other things. But the idea of, of what we can show through art and on stage and in conversation like today about the value of empathy, touch, as Susan Lee Foster calls it, kinesthetic or kinetic empathy, the idea of what movement are almost trying to get into someone's skin or feel what it might be like to be another person or to move like another person for a moment. Um, we do a lot of partnering, weight sharing, and trust issues uh, that are shown as physical metaphor, but also in the studio. We talk about everything as a company and we decide everything. The choreographic credit is uh, conceived and directed by me. Um, even though I always start a project asking the company if they're interested in what we're doing. Um, but the choreography and text credit is always uh, by the company, David Dorfman Dance. So everything is, is uh, done in that way. And although Lisa took a little time off from the company after 11 years working mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. solidly and all over the world, um, for the last probably, it seems like 11 years or more she's been back and doing projects and it might not even be that we start a project with Lisa in it and just say I have a little bit of an idea yes. we have this duet or we appear and I say that sounds great um, they start out very small yeah I have a little idea of like maybe I fit in here um yeah, yeah and was, then, but it's slowly been expanding over time, right? Yeah, and it's so jump in a little sooner. beautiful. You know, again, I just feel so lucky. I feel lucky to be alive. <laughs> I feel lucky to be here with Lisa Reyes uh, and to be with a wonderful company for so many years. And the notion of little conversations becoming ideas. It's like um, after this conversation, I think uh, Lisa and friends will be gardening. I am not a gardener, but I think I put my gardener, gardening in on stage where you have a little sprout of an idea and then it, it, it amplifies. There's one, one dance um, th that we just mentioned this morning when we were talking about this conversation called Coming Back Again that we did years ago. Um, and it had this beautiful elaborate set made out of junk discarded items it was all painted white and I think you said Lisa, you said what if I just appear out of the set mm -hmm. I didn't, wasn't even thinking of really moving in any way it was more <laughs> like just one object on this whole back wall that that just started shifting yeah 
And I think in the end, you came out of a door, like literally a door that was just a junky door and you didn't know it opened. And then all of a sudden, so I love the notion of reveal. And then we were able to do this lovely duet. And I just remember lighting up every time you came through the door. So I, I, I think, and in a way out of my body, it's similar. I feel, um, well, one of the things, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Lisa, but it, in a way out of my body, part of the inspiration came from me not feeling so well in my body. And this is about almost three and a half years ago, because um, this piece has been a long time with COVID time. Uh, we're so happy to bring it to the stage and have the world premiere. But um, I was not, something was wrong. I didn't quite know what was wrong. And um, I just started feeling the frailty of my otherwise healthy body and thinking about all those less healthy than I am, uh, those that have perished, those that you know are still here and figuring out how to um, move forward literally and figuratively. And I also started to think of out of body experiences I had as a kid where I'd be in a field, or I'd be playing sports and I'd be happy, happy, happy. And then all of a sudden I would not know if I was real and I would feel like I was both floating up or vanishing. And I would have to start touching my body and doing little um, kind of quirky movements to um, kind of impress on myself and literally press on myself that I was here. So the idea of presence, bodily presence and spiritual presence has been really important. And I mentioned that to the company and oh my gosh, and the different company members that even are here now and some the same, because it's been so long. And I want to really reference that again about time. But um, everyone had their own out-of-body experience that they wanted to tell and, and delve into. And then it became out of, out of body being like a birth image, out of body being a death image, which will... I think talk about in a moment, but anything else that um, comes to um, you in well, regard I to never that? Heard that story before. Um, <laughs> That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I so I think because I come in so much later oh. in the process, you know, like, I feel that you and the rest of the company really kind of start to figure out what kind of concepts you're going to play with and how to bring them into movement before I arrive. So I start to kind of look at what's happening. And uh, for me, I when I began to look at um, a way to eat, get myself in there. A way into this a dance. A way into <laughs> this dance with my body. Um, um, I did think about your your mother almost as if I was your mom. Yeah, um, thank you. And, um, you know, as someone that you lost when she was significantly younger, um, that's kind of- uh, There's no mom. There she is. Yeah. Um, and I never met Jeanette. Yeah. Um, so my, my first image was, was kind of somehow being some version some out of body version of her um and then as the the dance progressed and you know <laughs> this incredible timeline of pandemic and uh kind of getting to where we are um and and <laughs> having various joint replacements having just lost my mom um i'm not quite sure who who I am other than myself, but I'm really thinking or evoking right now in the performance of it, my mom. And then when, when we first performed that a couple of years ago, you and I had not created a duet yet. So, so now I'm also very much myself in, in the piece. Yeah. It's, it's been a, a, an amazing time. And I think um, uh, I'd like to be really open in this conversation. Um, like we're here and literally we're talking to you on Easter Sunday, the second full day of Passover. We're in Ramadan right now as well. 
um, two, three days ago, it was uh, Lisa's 63rd birthday. I'm 66. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, <laughs> no, but I think it's, it's we're the elders of the company. Um, the rest of the company ranges from um, mid 20s to early 40s. And that's that in and of itself is on purpose. I just love age range and showing humanity. And then we're, we're the elders in the, in the 60s. And um, it's an important aspect uh, for me of art. It's kind of like my version of, of, we've done tons and tons of community dances and community art with our company. But now, even within the company, I feel it's a little more of a community-based, uh, even if it's a fairly internal community-based uh, activity. And then compounding that is, that we are different people in this. I mean, I just, I love watching Lisa do this new solo over and over. And I feel that there's part of her that she didn't as much mention of almost like taking stock of her own mm. bodily ability, <laughs> change in body. She didn't tell you the real truth. She has two artificial hips and two artificial knees. <laughs> and this is her first performance Thank return, you, no sure. problem. Yeah. I'm just, you know, yeah, that's what I'm here for. And and this is um, her uh, brilliant and brave return to, to the stage fully. And so she's, you know, she's figuring that out, which to me is like, I always say subtext is content and context. One of my mottos. Um, and that, so she's kind of figuring that out in real time. And that is its own drama. <laughs> um, so I find that really compelling. And then I think you're also accessing a little bit without you really, neither of us, either of us wanting you to be my mom, but accessing that a little bit. And then also prior to your mom's death, you were, I think, embodying her a bit as mm -hmm. well and, mm -hmm. and her uh, a failing body and her failing yeah, uh, a, a sure. failing mind a bit um, there she is <laughs> beverly raised uh, yeah so um bev died 10 days ago so um this is very fresh with us and we actually did a showing style performance in costume at connecticut college that evening and um after um, going to see Beth after she had passed away. Um, so it's it's been it, it's been a time. it's been a time that was cathartic. Um, I remember a friend, a, th a theater artist here in town in New London, when we showed a version in February of 2020 before the pandemic. They said that they felt that it, it, they experienced catharsis at the end of it. Has a beautiful duet. Um, with uh, Kelly and Missy at the time, and now it's Kelly and Claudia. And when I heard the word catharsis, and this is not to pat myself on my um, five dollar thrift store um, jacket here, but um, it, I feel so lucky to either feel any moment of catharsis or be instrumental in any kind of transcendence or transformation to an audience member, even one, and hopefully many. And that we had pretty much no choice on that one, uh, the, the day that, that Bev died and we knew it was coming. It was six weeks of hospitalization. But to also say that um, Bev lived with us the last 10 years. And so our son, Samson, who's now about to turn 21 and has danced with us many times on stage, uh, um, went from 10 years old to 20 years old. Um, and uh, he was able to come in from college and see that that uh, show, you know, ten days ago. So the, the notion of family that's really important to both of us, um, it uh, it just pervades in the most positive of ways all the work we've done. I was thinking about someone I danced with in the early '80s, K to K, uh, and in her company, K to K's Moving Earth, and all her dances are named light, L-I-G-H-T, and they're just numbered, um, which is a very, I think, poignant and obvious way of saying we all do the same dance or piece of art, like kind of over and over. They're just different installments. I would feel that about Merce Cunningham's work, which I adored and still adore, is that this is current 20 minutes, the curtain comes down, don't need I need specific ending necessarily, and then curtain comes up, this is the next 20 minutes of my life work life's work. 
So we've had similar themes, as I said, of, 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 of time and possible transcendence and pain, sorrow, and always looking for the joy and the idea that we're lucky to be on this planet. And I think of service all the time, like how can we serve another human being? How can we serve a cause? And sometimes we try to model that. And in this piece in particular, by, by the idea of deep touch, um, safe touch and also of, of talking we use text a lot and so there's a series of monologues written by the, the cast members and sometimes it can even be a former cast member um uh we had an injury uh missy robinson is not uh, able to perform with us but created most all of this piece and we have shards of text of, of her that claudia uh, uh lynn breitmeyer is speaking and we have lily gelfan on stage nick owens on stage and kellyanne lynch on stage and then um um, we are the village elders uh kind of doing yet another installment of our relationship as kind of aching body elders <laughs> and a little bit aching heart but again so happy to be here and and just not knowing our body all the time um and i just as long as i'm on it i'll, I'll mention that we have a wonderful uh we call it a house band we haven't arrived on a name yet but uh, who have composed the music for it, um, uh, led by Sam Crawford and uh, Elizabeth Deleese, who, with whom I've worked for 10 to 12 years. Um, so that's another long-term collaboration. Mm -hmm. And then Zeb Gould and Jeff Hudgens, who I feel it's almost that long. And then the uh, incredible visual design is by Andrew Schneider. Uh, and Andrew is a new collaborator to me. Um, Andrew gave a wonderful lecture demonstration, shall we say, at Connecticut College. Um, I don't know, it must have been 2019. Uh, and um, I had always heard of his work and just missed seeing it a couple of times. We don't live in New York now for almost 20 years. And um, I was fascinated by Andrew's sense of, of time, of fall, of neurology, of empathy of rupture. Um, and I literally asked him afterwards, I said, I know you're doing your own work so much, but would you ever consider working with someone else? He said, sure, I would. I just kept in touch with him. He came and visited one time and he said, I feel like I've already been working on this dance. And he's made just stunning, stunning uh, visuals for it. So um, that's been really re rewarding. And the costumes are by Juana Botez, who uh, is our second project together. And they're um, wonderfully, elegant and fanciful at the same time. Um, and uh, the uh, other credit I wanted to say is uh, Ann Davison is our wonderful dramaturg that, again, I talk through everything with. This is, I guess, the third major project together, coming back again around town and, mm -hmm. and um, way out of my body. And then I was just thinking, and I'll turn it over to you, Elise, is that um, you kind of serve as like, um, <laughs> in-house dramaturg. Um, well, the way you had mentioned it before is that you're not necessarily in at the very beginning, but then you're always watching from the outside, listening to what I say. Um, because there's, you're always asking. To that is to very, very true. And uh, Lisa has her own uh, company and group that does both video work and um, a live work. Uh, and it's, it's brilliant stuff. Um, but I also feel that you are not mired i use that word loosely with some of the more yucky responsibilities of, of running, running this dance company and yet you are kind of like co-artistic director you know unofficially um and for that i'm just i unofficially ever... tell it like it is sometimes so, so grateful and one example is um so i i did this i do this monologue about my mom and and um uh this one occasion that you know well, anyway, it, it was a, one of hope and, and inspiration where she has, uh, she had MS. Um, she died when she was 71, when I was 33. Um, but um, for a lot of my um, kind of formative years, she just couldn't get around very well. And then one time after she saw me dance, this dance that I made about her, she dreamt she could walk. And then at the cast party, she got up and she took a few steps and then her body froze up again. And so I tell this story in a way out of my body. And I had done it um, 
almost a spur of a moment to inspire students and their parents at a baccalaureate ceremony at Connecticut College. And then I revisited it at a Jews and Jewishness and dance conference at Arizona State University. And then I said, you know, I think if I, without knowing that it was destined to be in this dance, I, I just kind of took the chance and, and inserted it and made it a part of it. And then I'd been doing it and I've added to it recently. And then I wanted to say something else. And Lisa said, what's holding you back? What do you want to say? Or what are you not saying? And I just like, I don't know if it was the next morning, I just got up really early and went to my computer and started writing. And I wrote this other short, very short monologue that's about letting go, letting go of this particular way of constantly thinking about my mom and this story. And so I think, again, it's um, there's this just invaluable, inseparable dialogue and conversation between the two of us and everyone you know in the company uh, that we just don't ever stop and give up until it's time to give it hopefully generously to the audience. Well, what do I say now? <laughs> Um, I think that uh, making work around family for both of us, I think maybe has been um, slightly different in terms of of the focus of the way that yes. we make. Um, you know, because I was thinking for for me, be, well, we, similarly, we are much younger than our sibling siblings. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because Bev was 39 when I was born. Um, um, As was my mom when I was born. I, I kind of feel like, unlike my siblings, or at least unlike, unlike Sherry, my oldest sister, um, I didn't really know who they were, you know, as younger people. And so... Um, in a way, making work that reflect family in some way, or parent might for me more specifically, mom and dad over the years um, has been a way to both imagine them as mm. they were when they were younger. Um, you know, for Bev, for mom, like, what was it like to be 101 years oh, yeah. old? We didn't say like, that. <laughs> she was 101. She was born in 1920. <laughs> so, you know, I, I see some photos from when they were younger and uh, just like, you know, like who were these people, you know? And then with my dad just recently, just because we've been going through a lot of photos um, lately, um, there's this one picture of him when he's probably 20 something and he's got this smirky smile on his face. And then I, that's like, oh, I know that smile, you know, like when he was 90. So it just, but it's a way to kind of interrogate or reimagine or reflect or talk about what their lives might have been or like when they were younger. And I, and I feel, yeah, I so agree with that. Um, uh, and I also feel like we're trying to find, even at these ripe old ages, we're trying to find ourselves through that process. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we are finding our, our siblings and our parents all the time. Um, our, our, our good friends, Dan Foot and Victoria Marks, incredible artists and really dear friends. Uh, Dan lost his dad when he was like 16 or something. And he did this one um, piece that, and one of the cruxes was that he was always looking for his dad in the theater. And not so much literally like his dad was, was uh, around there, but it was mostly like, he kept looking for him through theater making. And I, st I still think probably mm -hmm. continues. Um, and uh, yeah, they've just, both of, of those artists have just done such personal work and we just keep in touch. And I think that it's created this, you know, we were talking before this conversation about these mini communities that we keep coming back to that are about art making, bread breaking, um, wine drinking, whatever it is, it's just the the idea of enjoying one's life, furthering it, and figuring out what you you still want to do. And I will say one poignant thing: it was a couple of trips to New York ago, 
<laughs> and I think I might have texted Dan, who I just mentioned. We have a body of work called Live Sax Acts. It's like serial comic vaudeville work that we've made over a 30 year period. Um, we both play saxophone and that was the first dance we did. It's called Horn. But um, I saw a person that looked like in the same weekend, a young Dan and a young Dave that we call each other Dan and Dave. Um, and when I see that happening on a trip to New York, it's like, oh my God, that was me. That was me. And that's another reason why I still love, even though sometimes I feel it can be even more difficult to communicate so fervently and directly with younger generations, the older we get, but that was us. And so I think that it's, it's related when, when, you know, our, our younger company members, it's like, and I feel I was so, I remember Missy being a driving force and everyone was involved with it as well. Like we want you in this dance more, David and Lisa. And that's what spurred us on to make this duet. We both had solo appearances two years ago, but now we have solos a little more and then um, the duet. And it felt so wonderful to be asked to be <laughs> more present, even though we're scared of that, still are, um, as elders. Because I think there is a certain invisibility that starts to set in when you know, you're just not part of the young generation, you can't move as well, whatever. Um, so that's been really nice. And it also um, encourages me to appreciate each moment I get to see them on stage and them mm -hmm. interact because it is a, it's a glimpse into my past, but it's also like, I'm so happy for their present and their future. And that's why we love to teach. Well, I think too, we, yeah. I mean, I love to watch and just admire, you know, mm -hmm. that real freedom that I think we have experienced dancing, but maybe don't experience in the same way anymore. And, and yet, um, I was thinking of the title, A Way Out of My Body, but I think that we also feel really fortunate to be in our bodies, mm. to, to still be moving in the way that we are, you know, and um, that, that, excuse me, getting a little emotional, um, that does make me think about how much my mom loved to dance. And uh, even while she was in the hospital, you just get little shoulders, little shoulders. You did, that's you did was giant arm dances. Yeah, we did with it. little yeah. arm dances where she would follow me and stuff. And, um, you know, that just, she loved movement. And I think we both do too. <laughs> Yeah, just just Whatever to the side here in our in our really ex expansive that's a joke uh, living room. <laughs> um, we have a very modest little house. Is um, we would just dance, and it would be Sam and Bev and the two of us. And each night coming to dinner, even with our walker, she'd be doing the dance. And we have a turntable over there that I adore and and play old records from the you know the thirties, forties, fifties. Yeah, that was a that was a big part. And a couple other things come to mind in this regard um, is that I just noticed as we were toasting to bed the other night that um, so my mom passed away um, when I was 33, I believe. And then the very next year I met Lisa and we can tell you more about that. And and then um, it's been kind of more than not 33 years that I've known Bev. So um, I'm fortunate to have had a, a mom and a mom figure, a mom friend um, for most all, all my life. Uh, so yeah, so that's, it's really been very, very important. And I also had a gregarious salesman um, dad who traveled with us and performed in our pieces as well. So I don't wanna leave Oscar out of this conversation. <laughs> um, he's not so much mentioned in, in a way out of my body, but has been on screen and mentioned a lot in, in other dances that have been very, very important. Um, but but the, uh, I don't know, the notion of that continuity and now that we're, I mean, now we can both say that we're parentless parents. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea of raising, we have a, a one child that we've mentioned, Samson, and it's just uh, just a, a joy and a privilege to, to see him grow. Um, and well, <laughs> there he is. He's awesome. And there is Samson Ray Storfman with Beverly Race. Yeah, um, just uh, such joy. Um, and um, yeah, and coming back again, he 
jumped out, got on my shoulder. We toured that piece for a while and he was um, younger when we started it. And then by the time we did the last performance, it was like, whoa, he's really tall and a, and a bit heavier. Um, so I don't know, we just had had so much fun with that. Um, the, the quick story of our, um, and it's never quick with me, um, uh, a meeting is that we met in a changing trailer at Central Park. Um, I was performing with the wonderful Susan Marshall and company and Lisa was performing with the wonderful uh, Sarah Pearson and Patrick Vidrig. And, and yeah, and we were at um, Bethesda Fountain, um, famous, and um, uh, we were the last two people in the changing trail tra trailer. And I said, "Oh, hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Lisa." And then didn't see each other for for months. And then I saw her in a in a dance at um, I think it was. What was it called? Dia. Dia. What was it called? Dia, whatever. Dia on Mercer Street. Um, this wonderful studio, no longer there. And it seemed that Lisa was leaping. Arthur Avilas. Yeah, Arthur, Arthur Avilas used to dance with Bill T. Jones and now has this uh, wonderful bad up in the Bronx organization um, with Charles. Uh, uh, leaping from one side of the stage to the other. The room. It just like the whole place. Um, and I approach her, I said, remember, long whatever. And I, I said, remember, <laughs> remember me from, you know, the uh, um, Dancing in the Streets event uh, at, at Central Park. She said, yeah. I said, well, we're having an audition. Would, would you come? And she said, mm, probably not. <laughs> and I said, really? You really should come. You're incredible. And so she rethought it and came and um, we asked her to join the company. There was some callbacks and we asked her to join the company and we were friends and co-workers for 11 it was years. A long, yeah, process. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. both in other relationships. Uh, and then um, when it came time for Lisa to um, leave the company and I remember giving her on the stage at Brooklyn Academy of Music at the Harvey Theater, giving her a teary goodbye. I kind of lost it there. Um, but we knew that I was no longer going to be her boss, though it might be both appropriate and fun to date. And so um, that's when that happened. And so uh, Sam's going to be 21. And I uh, proposed on Sam's first birthday. It was Mother's Day. Um, and so we will be married 20 years. So that's that history. And we've been here almost 20 years. And so it's been a new life. Uh, the company's still located in New York. And then we're company residents up here. So they come up here quite often. But we're still a New York-based company. And it's very exciting. We've, I just want to say this is, you know, I have to turn off the salesman in me. But um, I just want to credit NYU. We've been coming to the Summer Dance Residency Program um, for, I don't even know, I would say 25, 27 years in a row. And every dance that we've made, we've worked on there. And a way out of my body, um, oh my gosh, so many summers, uh, even if it was virtually through the pandemic. But I want to thank Pam Pietro, Sean Curran, and um, all the folks that have aided us over the years there. And I can't wait to see students and, and faculty at, at this show. But we we're very loyal. <laughs> And again, that's that closeness and tightness um, that can lead to rupture and, and disagreement and um, disarray. And there are purposeful disjunctures uh, and, and moments uh, that don't connect in this dance. And I think that is a really active part of collaboration. I'm, I avoid conflict so that it's not so easy for me and I, I, there's a lot of consternation around that, but the older I get, I'm I hear. <laughs> I'm trying to accept it. And acceptance is a mantra that's come to me a lot, accepting different, uh, the way that the body ages and accepting these times, these extremely mm -hmm. disparate and violent times. Um, but I feel that we get a chance to be in the rehearsal studio and then on stage and model behavior of trust and of love. And um, that's where I figure I, I don't find myself an on the street activist. I've been at demonstrations. I've done that over the years as much as I can. It's inspired me, inspired this one older piece called Underground about the weather underground, who again, became very good friends with Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, who are a family, know their son. You know, it's like um, amazing that just that community and that family. But I feel that our activism is, is it's like studio activism. 
it's like when we're in the studio, we want to honor everything and every thought. Uh, everyone's ideas are honored, at least I certainly try to. And, and then we make something together that is hopefully reflective of who we are in the studio. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure I mentioned the cast, right? I said, uh, mm -hmm. Nick, Lily, Kelly, and, and Claudia Lynn. And then I just want to also mention and thank uh, Jordan Lloyd, uh, Jared Brown, Doug Gillespie, uh, who, uh, who had started the Simon Thomas train, uh, Jasmine Hearn, who had started this process, Kendra Portier, who sat out and watched um, as, a, as a rehearsal director in the early, early days of this. Um, so important and, and um, and I feel that we're finally bringing um, a, a wonderful, rarefied new version uh, to the stage. Um, yeah, anything else you wanna say about conversations, collaborations? Um, well, I think, I think that that's probably a good place to conclude, you know, just that collaboration will continue in different forms in each dance and for us, in our house and we're trying to rediscover what our house is like without without my mom um it's very quiet <laughs> like who are we now <laughs> oh i'm glad we're laughing our now but it's, yeah we, it's, <laughs> the, the laughing has been a little bit on the minimal side and <laughs> i love to laugh and yeah it's um the idea of you know we can't turn away from pain and loss. And I believe that humor and laughter and joy and, and memory and how our memory, that's been another theme of this dance, is how we actually remember and create and recreate ourselves. Again, mm -hmm. based on our real or imagined history, her story, their story. You know, it's like this, this idea of inclusivity and what we actually decide to exclude, sometimes for a good reason and sometimes for a bad reason, is what memories or what people get left out. So um, now that um, <laughs> we, we have a little more rarefied, smaller household, we were in a, I think a good discovery mode, but it's also like a, a joyous and peaceful mode because that's kind of how we began. You know, it was pre-Sam and mm -hmm. yeah, pre your mom living with us. Yeah, yeah. maybe some spring cleaning will happen. <laughs> that 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 um, that could happen, and so maybe with spring cleaning and gardening awaiting us, <laughs> we should we should sign off. And uh, can't thank you enough for the opportunity to communicate with you and. Um, Hope to see you in the theater. And if you're watching this afterwards and have any questions and comments, I'm not too hard to find and <laughs> I can pass it on to Lisa and we feel privileged and lucky to, to be here with you. So thank you very much. Thank you.